pirates. Undoubtedly, the most adventurous and unconventional characters of humanity. Who dared to rebel against the world and fight against the powerful fleets of empires? The goals of these legendary warriors were to obtain loot. Sometimes just to explore or take revenge for a loved one. Pirates invade cities and attack ships at unexpected moments. And then depart from there with the loot they have obtained. Embarking on long journeys. However, some pirates. They have even established their own countries and are considered one of the greatest pirates in history. By Western sources, Barbarossa Hayreddin Pasha, who later served the Ottoman Empire, was one of them. Most pirate captains felt much stronger and better when they had a crew to follow them and a ship to sail. But Barbarossa was a little different from them because, besides having a crew and a ship to follow him, he also had large fleets and even a state on the Algerian coast. Because of the fear he instilled, he was given the nickname Barbarossa, which means a red beard in reference to his facial hair, by Europeans. Barbarossa Hayreddin was one of four children of a Turkish father from Thessaloniki and a Greek mother born in Midilai. His real name was actually Heiser, but years later, during the reign of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, he was given the name Hayreddin, which means the goodness of religion. Although he started his career in seafaring as a humble and ordinary sailor, his capture by the Knights of Rhodes in the Aegean Sea one day greatly changed his character. It is not known exactly what he experienced during his years of captivity. Barbarossa, whose property and wealth were seized, formed a pirate fleet with his brothers to seek his own justice and raid western territories. After plundering several Spanish trading ships with his own ships, Barbaro's economy became stronger and he began to make quick raids on the coastal cities of Europe. While doing so, he did not neglect to win the friendship of the King of Tunis and Yavuz Sultan Selim by sending them gifts. He has now become a legend, so much so that Barbaros has become the most feared sailor in the Mediterranean. There are even some legends that are still told on the shores of Italy today. According to the legends, the monstrous Turks with their terrifying dark faces come to steal naughty children at night. Italian mothers scare their misbehaving children by saying, if you don't be quiet, the Turks will come and take you away. The emergence of these legends is due to the actions of Turkish pirates like Barbaros. Barbaros was so infamous that he started raiding the coastal cities of Europe and abducting young girls and boys. He would take these children as hostages and offer the young girls as gifts to his friendly sultans. Sometimes, he would even sneak into palaces at night and abduct queens and princesses, sending them as gifts to the Ottoman sultans. His gift of an Italian princess to Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent even earned him the enmity of Hurram Sultan. It is known that Barbaros employed 60,000 Christian slaves in the construction of the port of Algiers. One day, while his men were searching a Christian slave, they found a letter written between the papacy and the kingdom of Tunis. In the letter, the Pope says he will launch a crusade and the Tunisian Sultan says no Turk should be left in North Africa. It even demands the head of Barbaros. Upon this, Barbaros invaded and took control of Tunis and Algeria under his protection. The Pope, who was uneasy about these developments in Africa, sent a fleet of 600 large ships commanded by Andrea Doria to take over the Turkish-controlled Previsa fortress. 
Kanyuni Sultan Suleiman made a deal with Barbaros and gave him command of the Ottoman navy. In the end, the bloody battle resulted in the destruction of the 600-strong crusader fleet by Barbaros. This event is one of the greatest naval battles in Mediterranean history and was won thanks to Barbaros' superior seamanship. Kanyuni Sultan Suleiman declared Barbaros the Capadon Idiria, Grand Admiral, for his achievements. Barbaros, who was once an ordinary merchant, became a feared pirate and later became the commander of the largest navy in the Ottoman Empire. Barbaros, who lived a life of adventure and at sea, passed away in Istanbul in his old age. He remembered his lost companions and passed away peacefully. It is known that his last wish was to be thrown into the sea as a sailor, but it was not fulfilled due to the reaction of the Sheikh al-Islam of that time. However, he had accomplished something no pirate had ever done before in his lifetime. He had struck fear into the hearts of people everywhere from the Indian Ocean to the coasts of Spain and completely changed the future of the Mediterranean. Even today, he is respected by Western historians. According to historians, even the character of Barbossa in Caribbean Pirates was inspired by Barbaro's Hayretan Pasha. The word pirate means a bandit, so they are often imagined in popular culture as rough and unkempt, but the reality is a bit different. William Dampier is the best example of this. This English pirate was more of an archivist than necessary, which is why he is also called a scientific pirate. He circled the world three times and was a famous writer who recorded everything he saw during his travels. Dampier was also an explorer and had a small hobby of raiding Spanish towns and plundering foreign ships. Despite being a wanted criminal, he was also a great explorer and scientist. Moreover, he was quite educated for his time. For instance, the Oxford Dictionary refers to his writings thousands of times. He introduced many Eastern words into English. Additionally, he is known as the first naturalist of Australia having described many of the species he encountered there. He was the first to describe kangaroos as large leaping animals and koalas as little bears that hug the tree tightly. Dampier's work had such an impact on the scientific community that even Charles Darwin referred to his writings as a source. However, what made Dampier a tough guy was not related to science or literature. In 1688, when he was about to complete his world tour, he abandoned his ship, crew, and everything else and stranded himself alone on the shores of Thailand, which was then the middle of nowhere. Eventually, he was found in England, completely penniless and with nothing but his memoirs. Moreover, his entire body was covered in authentic tattoos. He also wrote about having a love affair with a female leader of a primitive tribe in Thailand. Later, William published all of his diaries as a book and made some money. Seeing that he was bored with city life after making some money, he gathered his crew and resumed piracy. In his adventures around the world, he looted dozens of Spanish ships and was the first to set foot in many unexplored regions. William's death was also quite mysterious and befitting of his adventurous spirit. The reason, date, place, and location of his burial are unknown. It is only accepted that he died in 1715 after being unseen for months. Although most of the famous pirates in history were men, one of the greatest pirates in history was a woman named Ching Shi. At 26 years old, she worked in a brothel in China when she met Zheng Yi, who had a moderately sized pirate fleet. 
she agreed to marry him on the condition that he give her a share of the loot. Ching quickly proved her ability with her tough attitude and unique leadership methods, and when her husband Zheng died, she became the captain of the pirate fleet. Through Ching's leadership, the Red Flag pirate fleet grew to include around 800 ships. Ching had a crew of 50,000 pirates at sea and established assassination and espionage teams consisting of 20,000 men, women, children, and elderly on land. The power of this tough woman, who could even track every breath taken in the Chinese palace, caused the Chinese king to rightfully feel uneasy and even scared. Because the domination of the entire China Sea was in the hands of this woman. She could even have the king's closest ones killed with a single word. So, what was the secret that made this young woman the most powerful leader in the East and made her enemies tremble? The answer lies in the commonalities she shares with famous leaders like Genghis Khan. Ching Shi established her own rules of piracy, which included clear laws such as punishment for disobedience, stealing from the loot, setting foot on land without permission, raiding loyal towns without permission, and committing rape without the fleet leader's knowledge. The punishment was severe, the offender would have their head shaved and body thrown into the ocean. Additionally, when unattractive women were captured, they were released unharmed, while attractive women were shared as spoils among the Red Flag fleet or sold to fleet members. A pirate could marry a beautiful woman if he purchased her, but if he treated her poorly, he would be punished by having his hair shaved off and his body thrown into the ocean. One of Ching Shi's most common punishments was to tie the guilty party to a heavy iron weight and throw them into the sea. If the attackers were from countries such as China, Portugal, and Spain, the prisoners were nailed to the deck by their feet and beaten to death. It is said that she once threw 3,000 British and Chinese soldiers, whom she had taken prisoner, into the ocean while they were still alive by tying them together. As a result, many Chinese commanders chose to commit suicide rather than falling into her hands. Despite all the efforts of her enemies, Qing Shi's growth couldn't be stopped. Although the emperor sought help from the British, the large fleets sent by the English were defeated every time and their ships were seized by the female pirate. Realizing that he couldn't defeat her, the Chinese emperor issued a pardon for Qing and her men and offered them money. Although she initially refused, Qing Shi eventually accepted the offer and gave her fleet as a gift to the Chinese emperor. Many of her men were also enlisted as officers in the Chinese army. Qing Shi left behind her challenging and fast-paced life and settled in China with her son, where she established a gambling and brothel chain. She also had 10,000 men serve as her personal security until she passed away at the age of 69. Even after her death, she still held the title of the most powerful female pirate. Years later, her life and that of her son became the subject of many films, such as The Pirates of the Caribbean. She is still known as the Queen of the Seas. Subscribe to see more videos like this.